Welcome to the Continuum Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this MIDI percussion instrument. But first, I need to share a very exciting announcement. This week was the world premiere of my new workshop concept, which I'm currently offering to schools and institutions. The very first workshop was held at the Baix Monchen High School in San Celoni, here in the north of Spain, where I live. The kids were around 12 years old, and they seemed to have a lot of fun building and playing with the Continuum Lab instruments. I'm pretty happy with how everything went, although I was a little bit nervous at first. I have more workshops coming up next week, so I'll try to use the lessons learned in this first one to tune the concept to perfection. And once I finish uh, digesting the whole experience a little bit more, I will be back with some uh, thoughts and conclusions. Here are some of the instruments that the students made. When you compare them to my originals, they might seem to be somewhat lacking in aesthetic qualities, but the important and maybe surprising thing is that they actually work. As you can see right here, one of the instruments that we made in the workshop was this percussion kit, which is exactly the same one that I'm actually making in this video. So let's get on with it. This new percussion is loosely based on my earlier membrane percussion instruments, but adapted to my workshop concept. The individual drums in these designs are really very simple. All you need is a cylindrical shape of the right size, which is strong enough to support the tension of the balloon membrane and rubber bands. Kitchen roll cardboard tubes are not strong enough, but this other tube from a roll of fabric works nicely. I like to make my drums roughly 4 cm wide, which is large enough to play comfortably with your fingers, but small enough that you can make the membrane out of normal sized balloons. Up to 6 cm wide will also work, and smaller tubes can work as well, but really 4 cm is a good size, so that's what I'm going with. My previous designs all worked just fine, but there's one problem that I need to address, and that's the material that I use. While everyone can probably get their hands on some kind of tube of more or less the right size, I specifically need this new design to be repeatable for the workshops, so using fabric roll tubes or bamboo is not going to work. The instruments for my workshops are all made mainly out of corrugated cardboard, which is super easy to come by and very easy to work with. One of the main focuses in the workshops is on recycling and sustainability, and corrugated cardboard is almost universally recycled in a process which uses minimal energy while polluting little or not at all. I love corrugated cardboard and that's what I'm going to use, so let's get started. I'm going to hang on to this piece here as a size reference for the diameter, and then I'll build a similar cylinder out of this cardboard here. One lesson I learned from previous designs is that I don't need the drum to be this tall. So I'll try 2 cm, which should be perfect for the sensors that I'll use. More on that later. I'll just measure out a 2 cm wide strip here, making sure to cut it out across the direction of the corrugation. Next I'll make a base for the drum. I'll make a couple of individual drums first, just to test out a couple of ideas before I commit to building a full set. Then I'll make a series of shallow cuts down the length of the cardboard strip. This is not strictly necessary, but it helps a lot with making the cardboard more pliable, so it's easier to make our cylinder shape. See, now it's quite easy to make a curved shape. But what would make this even easier would be to have some kind of mold to hold this in shape while I glue it. Hmm, the original tube for my old drums is no good, because it would make the new drum quite a lot bigger. But what about this smaller tube here? This comes from a roll of aluminum foil and is around 3 cm in diameter. That looks pretty good. The sizes are almost exactly the same. Keeping in mind that there is some flexibility in size here, this should work just fine. Ok, so I'm going to make two individual drums first, because I need to test out a couple of things. I'm a bit concerned that the edge of my strip of corrugated cardboard might not be strong enough for this, because it will be under constant sideways tension from the membrane, while of course being hit with fingers and such from above. In case it doesn't hold up, I have an idea for how I'm going to strengthen it, and that's why I'm making two drums. So using my tube mold, this is pretty easy. I roll the strip around the mold, then I retract the inner tube a bit so that I can apply hot glue to the outer tube without gluing the mold in place. Then I apply the glue. For this kind of structure, it's better to put a bit of glue evenly around the whole edge, rather than a few larger globs spaced out. Once the glue sets, remove the mold, cut off the excess cardboard strip, and then apply a bit of glue to where the ends of the strip meet. There. That's the basic drum. Of course there's no sensor in this one, but that's fine. I'm just testing the strength here, not the functionality. 
and I can already feel that this might not be strong enough. Let's try to apply the membrane and see how that goes. These drums have a double membrane. There's a white balloon on the inside to reflect the light from the sensor and a black balloon on the outside to prevent ambient light from interfering with the sensor. Now, already after applying the first rubber band, I can see some different... Like I said, there's a lot of deformation here, so that's definitely going to be a problem. I could try to find a smaller rubber band so that I don't have to double it up like this and maybe the membrane could be looser but the edge of the drum would still have to withstand the normal abuse of just being a percussion instrument. So that brings me to my second test drum. I'll build it up in exactly the same way so that I get an exact copy of the first one except this one's not bent out of shape. And now to prevent the deformation of this problematic edge here I'm going to strengthen it and for that I'll use some hot glue. You don't need to use very much here to get a huge increase in strength and stiffness. Again, the most important part is distributing it evenly. All the instruments in my workshops rely on hot glue to put together their basic structures, but really most other kinds of glue would work as well. I like hot glue because it's easy to use and sets really quickly. That's what it looks like up close. Once the glue is properly set, it's time to apply the membranes and see if it holds up. An added bonus of this plastified edge on the drum is that it makes applying the first membrane easier because it has a higher friction than the bare cardboard. Looking good so far. Zero deformation. Everything feels nicely solid. Let's put on the second membrane. Still looks good. So that takes care of the design for the individual drums and now I just need to make a full set. But first I'll have to make some kind of base for them, because as you've just seen, the base is an integral part of each drum. So I'll make a common base that I can then build all of the drums on top of. For that, I picked out this piece of corrugated cardboard here, which measures roughly 25 by 20 centimeters. From this piece, I'm going to try to make both the strips for the individual drums, as well as the basic structure which will hold everything together. Cutting off these two 2 cm wide strips leaves me with about 16 cm, which I think should be plenty. Next I'll prepare the cardboard strips just like before to make them more pliable and then cut the two strips in half to get four strips of about 12.5 cm each. I ended up cutting a third strip which I ultimately didn't need out of the main piece so now it's just 14 cm wide. Still, that should be enough. Let's see if we can turn it into something useful. The technique that I use for folding corrugated cardboard is covered at great length in the previous few videos and just like in those builds, the measurements here are defined by the size of the electronics and in this case the size of the drums. So I'll fold this up like so, making a closed structure which will hold the electronics and leaving a flat section on the side wide enough for the drums. The electronics that I'm talking about of course is this breakout board for the Teensy LC which I designed specifically for these instrument builds. It has everything I need for this percussion as well as many other instruments and it fits nicely into the structure that I just made. The rest of the instrument is reserved for the drums themselves. Let's see, one, two, three, and then the fourth one will go back here. Now I could just put it right on top of here, but I think for this build I'd prefer to have them all on the same level. So I'll need to remove a bit of this section. I'll measure out a bit more than the width of a single drum and then just cut off this section like that. So now this is what I'm left with. That looks great. Next I'll glue the breakout board into place. And then I'll apply some hot glue to these folds and on this end section here and then hold everything in place while the glue sets. Now in order to have access to the electronics I'm going to make a hatch in the top surface right here. And now I'm really regretting that I didn't do this before inserting the electronics because uh, like this I have to be really careful not to cut into the actual microcontroller. Anyway, it worked out okay. Then I get a piece of tape and stick it on the end of the lid like this, leaving a small flap sticking up which will serve as a handle. That works great. I love how corrugated cardboard is both flexible and pliable enough to allow the lid to move, but also strong enough to actually work as a lid. Please notice that I've placed my lid so that I have access to the analog section on the breakout board. The drums use analog sensors and this is where I will plug them in. And now it's time to start putting together the actual drums. I'll need everything that you saw me use for the test drums a minute ago and then of course the sensors. I'm using the CNY70 optical sensor for these drums. I have this handy sensor module which carries the sensor itself as well as the necessary resistors and connections. So the way I use it here, it's basically a distance sensor, measuring the distance to the membrane at all times. 
My modules are set up to measure reliably at between 1mm and just over 1cm with higher resolution at lower heights. I'll probably have to raise each sensor up a bit inside the drum with some kind of platform to put them at the perfect height. I'll cut the platforms out of the leftover cardboard. Now I'll decide where to put each drum and let me just say the 14cm width of the base is a bit on the small side for three of these drums. I really wish I hadn't cut out that third strip before. So you've already seen how I make these drums, but of course this time I will be including the actual sensor. So let me just take you through one of them in full detail and then the other three are basically the same. Just like before, I take one of my prepared cardboard strips, roll it around the mode tube and then glue it in place on the base. And then I stop because I realized that I forgot to put the sensor in first. I'll remove that, but keep it. It'll still work fine for this. So let's start over. First, I get one of my platform pieces and check its position on the base. Then I make a cut in the base where the cable of the drum will pass through. Then I glue the platform into place and then the sensor on top of it, making sure to get the cable in the right position. Next, I reapply glue to the cylinder piece from before and then I set it down on top of the platform and sensor assembly like this. Just like before, I'll strengthen the edge of the drum with some hot glue and that's it. The first drum is basically done. And before I apply the membranes and plug it in, I'm going to just quickly put together the other three. Ready? And of course, get some hot glue around the edge of each one. So now I can plug in these cables. I'll slide each one in from the side and up through the lid like this, and then I plug them into the positions that I'm showing at the bottom of the screen right now. Then I'll fold the cables up a bit so that I can close the lid. Well, so that I can barely kind of close the lid. Maybe I should have made this whole assembly a little bit taller. Still, it works okay, and now all of the sensors are plugged in. <laughs> I still really like this lid. The last sensor that's going on this instrument is the calibration button. All of my prototypes have one of these because it allows me some flexibility when constructing my DIY sensors, knowing that I can always calibrate the instrument to accommodate differences in sensor resolution and sensitivity. I'll try to put this somewhere out of the way, but still easy to reach. I'll apply a bit of hot glue and place the sensor, and then I plug it into digital pin 8. There. Now it's time for the membranes. Just like before, I'll apply the two layers separately and then go through the rest of the drums to do the same. Like that. The drums are done. Now I just need to plug this USB cable into the microcontroller over here and then I can bring it over to the computer, plug it in and make some noise. Let's do it! The code for the new percussion is available on the Continuum Lab GitHub page. It's similar to previous percussion sketches, but I have improved a few things and of course added a fourth drum in the code. I'll upload the code to the instrument using Arduino. And then before I open up the software synth and all that, I'll quickly calibrate the drums by pressing down the calibration button and then activating each drum. And now I can open up the Yoshimi software synthesizer and then connect the instrument through jack and I'm ready to play. <laughs> And there you go, the drums are fully functional. The sensitivity is also quite a lot better than before, uh, mainly due to some of the improvements that I made in the code, but also because of my shallower drum design with the shorter distance between the sensor and the membrane, giving more resolution and sensitivity. So that's the fourth video in this series, and my original plan was to make four of these very basic workshop instruments and four build videos to go with them. However, I have decided that there's going to be at the very least one more instrument uh, in the series and uh, possibly more, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Now that uh, I've successfully kicked off my workshops, I'm going to start focusing more on my electronics kits, uh, which I still need to finalize and set up a sales platform for. So these kits are designed for making instruments. And uh, the idea is that they will allow anyone to easily follow along in my build videos or design and make their own MIDI controllers. I will be showcasing these kits with some more advanced instruments and cool tutorials, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss that, then you should definitely subscribe right here in the Continuum Lab YouTube channel, and also find me over on Instagram, uh, also as Continuum Lab. I post more interesting projects like this one regularly. 
And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I'll see you in the continuum.